Hi everyone, I'm Maggie Weldon from Maggie'sCrochet.com and in this video Christina is going to show you how to do hyperbolic crochet. Back in June we did a blog post featuring some of the most beautiful hyperbolic crochet you'd ever seen and the pieces go from the ceiling all the way down to the floor and we got a lot of comments and requests asking for a pattern on how to do it so we decided to do this video for you and this is just a small piece and but it came out really neat looking and we used um, a yarn that's variegated and it's just worsted weight yarn and we increased every every other stitch so that we could get this really super uh, intense ruffle on there and um, if you look on the inside it actually starts out with a very short chain like that and that's how much ruffling happens with this pattern. So it's really easy to make. It's just a little bit um, time consuming, especially if you're going to make it a lot longer. Um, so this will give you a great start on how to do it. And some of this is more like free form. So you just decide how long you want to make it. And the pattern is uh, really repetitious. It's just increasing every other one every single row. So um, be sure to visit our website, which is maggiescrochet.com, and subscribe to our channel. And thank you very much for watching. Hey everybody, it's Christina from maggiescrochet.com, and today I'm going to teach you the basics of hyperbolic crochet. Uh, a few weeks ago on our blog, we posted lots of pictures of these absolutely gorgeous um, pieces of art that were made using the principles of... Um, hyperbolic surfaces and so many people have been asking how do you make these that we thought we'd do a quick little tutorial on them. Uh, now I didn't make the ones in those pictures that we posted so I can't tell you exactly how they're made but I can teach you the basic principles of uh, these surfaces. So this one here was made by uh, Vicki in our office using worsted weight yarn and half double crochets so I'm going to show you how to make this particular one today and try to explain the principles so that you can go off and experiment and make your own. So I'm going to start with a chain of 12. You want to start fairly small because as you can see they, they do expand and get much bigger. So this one I started with a chain of 12. I'm going to half double crochet in the third chain from the hook. A uh, half double starts out like a double. You'll yarn over insert down into the stitch, to grab a loop, pull it through. You've got three loops on your hook at this point. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three at once. That's a half double crochet. For this particular pattern, we increased in every other stitch. So I did one in that one. In the next one, I'm going to do two half double crochets, one and a second one in the same chain. And then the next one, I'll just do one half double crochet. Then I'll increase in the next one. And just one in the next. So um, different hyperbolic structures increase at different rates. You might try increasing in every third stitch or you know even in every sixth or seventh stitch depending on just how ruffled you want your piece to be. As I said, this one increased in every other stitch, so it ruffled up pretty fast. This is, um, it's only, well, let's see how many rows is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So in only about ten rows, we've gone from a starting chain that's about four inches, that's my starting chain right there, to this great big ruffled uh, work. So, you know, obviously if you only increase in every fifth or sixth stitch, yours won't ruffle up quite so quickly. But however after, often you're increasing, you'll just do that all the way across. So I've just got a couple more stitches to get to the end of this first row. And when you get to the end of the row, it's okay if you don't get to finish your uh, stitch repeat pattern. You know, if you get to the end of the row and say you were doing, say you were doing five, you were increasing in every fifth stitch, 
you get to the end of the row and you have only two stitches left. We'll go ahead and do those two, just like this. And then you would chain two and chain one and turn for half doubles. And just continue right where you left off. So if you had two here, then you would have three and then increase here. Um, so it doesn't matter if you don't finish your pattern at the end of the row. Just pick up where you left off when you start the next one. So you can see already how many stitches I've added to just my little chain, and it's starting to want to curl up a little bit. And as I continue, you'll begin to see the ruffle even more. So I would love to see what you guys do uh, experimenting with this. Please let me know, you know, how often you increased. Was it every second stitch? Was it every third? Was it every tenth? Um, however often you did it, I would love to know. Uh, and I'm sure everybody else would love to know uh, the different rates of increase and what they come out looking like. But this is a fun little project. Like I said, there's no exact pattern. It's kind of a make it up as you go along, which I always thought was fun. So um, you can certainly uh, share links to your photos or if you want to go to our Facebook page, that's a great way to share photos with us as well. And the link for that, the link for the original blog post and the link to uh, the written directions for this will be down in the description. Thanks for watching guys. And this is the third part, um, which we're going to do the edging round. So um, at the end of row 13, so what that is, is to just go between these two shells and go into that space right there and work a single crochet like that.